What is up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about benzene rings. First we're going to introduce what benzene rings are and why they're special and then we'll talk about how to name benzene rings. Notice that benzene is a six-membered carbon ring. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons and it has three double bonds. So it's kind of like a cyclohexane but then it has three double bonds. Because we have this alternating double bond structure, we could put the double bonds where they are, or we could actually just rotate them one carbon over in each case. So both the yellow bonding shown there and the blue bonding are equally good ways to represent them. When we have two equally good ways to represent a molecule, we call those resonant structures. So resonant structures. And remember that these electrons and these double bonds are generally localized right where you see the double bond. So most of the time when you see a double bond drawn, that means there's electrons hanging out between two carbons. When we have these resonant structures with alternating double bonds though, we get a very special situation where the electrons in our double bonds actually are free to roam around this whole ring. So there's a sense in which neither of these by themselves is a great representation of benzene because the electrons aren't hanging out between two particular carbons. Instead, all of them are free to roam in this big circle. And that gives us another way to draw benzene. So benzene is called aromatic because of those freely roaming electrons. And to represent those freely roaming electrons, we can draw ourselves a cyclohexene, and then we just put a ring. And that ring represents those free electrons that can roam all around that molecule. Now, strictly speaking, they're not totally free. They're still bound to that molecule, but they can roam all the way around it in a full circle. This gives benzene really unique properties. Uh, it makes the electrons in benzene relatively low energy, and it allows those electrons to conduct electricity. So for example, if you've ever seen an organic light emitting diode TV, an OLED TV, or you have an OLED screen on your smartphone, those are actually made of compounds like benzene. They're organic compounds that conduct electricity. So in our aromatic compounds like benzene, those electrons move freely around the molecule. So that's kind of why it's special. Now let's talk about naming benzene rings. All right, when we name benzene rings, it looks really similar to when we name other cyclic compounds. The only real change is that we're gonna use benzene as the base name. So the rules for naming benzene ring. For a single substituent ring, we just add a substituent in front of writing benzene. So in this first compound, we see bromine. So bromine's on benzene. So we're just gonna put bromo and then benzene. Bam, that's it. So notice this name always ends in benzene and we just tack a substituent up front. All right, similarly, when we have chlorine, we're just gonna put chloro benzene. So nothing super surprising there. We just have this new base name benzene because it's such a special important molecule and we tack the substituent names on in front. When we only have one substituent, we don't need a number. When we have multiple substituents, we do need numbers. And then we're just gonna follow the rules that we have for naming cycloalkanes. So it's the same exact rules here. We just use benzene as the ending, uh, as the ending name. What are those rules? Well, we wanna give the substituent the lowest possible numbers and we'll prioritize the alphabetically first substituent. So if we have two choices, we'll go with the one that comes first in the alphabet as the lowest number. All right, first up, let's look at this chlorine containing compound on the left. We have two chlorines and we can name it a couple different ways. We could start here with one and we could go clockwise around the benzene ring and name the carbons that way. Or we could use blue on the inside and go counterclockwise. Which one should we use? Well, if you've named some cyclic compounds before, you will right away recognize we should use the blue numbering because it gives our chlorine the one and three position, which is far better than the one and five position. So we're gonna go ahead and use that blue numbering. So let's get rid of those red numbers. And we're gonna name it one comma three di chloro benzene, bam. So you can see that looks really familiar. All right, now on the right here, we have bromine and chlorine. Which one should we give the one to? Well, bromine comes first in the alphabet, so we're gonna give bromine the one. And here, you can pretty quickly see that we wanna give chlorine the two. We don't wanna go the other direction. That would obviously lead to chlorine being a higher number. It would get six. So we're gonna use this numbering. It gives the bromine one and the chlorine two. Okay, and now we're gonna list bromine first because it comes first in the alphabet. It'll be one bromo, two chloro, and then it ends with the name benzene. Okay, so the benzene, whenever you see that written, means we have that six-membered carbon ring with those alternating double bonds, which sometimes you'll see 
with the alternating double bonds written, and sometimes with that ring we looked at. Okay, now here's the thing. With benzene rings that have two substituents, we actually have special names that we use instead of the numbers sometimes. So we can use the numbers, and that's totally fine, or we can use these other words which indicate the position of our substituents. Those words are ortho, meta, and para. Okay, so what we're thinking about here is we have some substituent, which they've labeled R, that represents our first substituent. So that would be whatever we'd want to give the number one to. And then if we had another substituent at the second position, we would call that ortho. So basically we just go ahead and take ortho and we're going to substitute the word ortho for one comma two. Or if we have something at the first and third position, then we're going to substitute the word meta for one comma three. Lastly, if we had something that was one comma four, we would use para. All right. So just another option. Do you have to use ortho, meta, and para? No, you don't. You can use either the numbering or ortho, meta, and para. But because these show up so often, you do need to know both of these different ways of naming these benzene rings. Now, here's a quick trick to remember the uh, numbering here. If we take, uh, if we start with our R, and then we go R O M P, we actually get the word romp. Okay. So this is just a mnemonic to remember it. It makes romp. And remember that R is our first carbon. O would be our second. Meta, three would be, would be our third carbon. And para would be our fourth carbon. So romp with numbering at one, two, three, four is a really easy way to remember that if you have a meta compound, then you're going to have one comma three. If you have a para compound, then you're going to have one comma four as the positions. Let's go ahead and practice this. Okay, so here we have the two compounds we named earlier. 1,3-dichlorobenzene and 1-bromo-2-chlorobenzene. How can we rename these using ortho, meta, and para? Well, in this case, notice that we have 1,3 for dichlorobenzene, which is the same as meta. So we can go ahead and substitute that 1,3 for just meta. So we can write out meta dichlorobenzene. And that's exactly the same thing except for I have to spell it right. It's B-E-N-Z-E-N-E. -E -E. There we go, spelling's great. And sometimes because people don't like to write out the word meta, it's too long apparently, they'll put an italicized M dash. So M dichlorobenzene and meta dichlorobenzene, same exact things. Okay, what about one, two? Or what about the one bromo, two chlorobenzene? Here for one, two, we know that we need to use ortho. Okay, so for ortho, we would write ortho, or we could just put an O, bromo, chloro, benzene. All right, so that's using our ortho, para, and meta names to go ahead and just provide a different way to name our two substituent benzene rings. So you should be familiar with ortho, meta, and para. And remember, it makes that romp uh, mnemonic there. Okay, let's go the other direction here. And just to remind ourselves, let's go ahead and write out our romp and our one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, totally easy to remember now. And now I come across meta difluorobenzene. Okay, well, how do I know where the substituents are for meta? Well, I look at my romp and I see that R is at one. I always have R, that's my first substituent, the one up top. And then I'm gonna have something at the third substituent at the meta position. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw my benzene ring. All right, and because we're lazy, we're gonna do a little circle. And then we always have something up top. That's our R group. So one of our fluorines is gonna be up there. Which one should go up there? Well, it's the one that's alphabetically first. So if I had two different substituents, remember the one is always gonna be that alphabetically first one. And then we have the other fluorine at the meta position, which is one, two, three. So it's gonna be right there on that third position. Okay, what about one, two, dichloro, four, fluoro, benzene? Oh, snap. That's a lot. Okay, well, let's just start by drawing our benzene ring. We notice this time that there's three substituents. Let me give myself some more space and write it out to the right. Once again, because we're lazy, we'll just do this little ring. And then we have a chlorine at the first position, at the second position, and then a fluorine at the fourth position, which is gonna be right there on the bottom. 
okay? So that would be 1,2-dichloro-4-fluorobenzene. And lastly, we're ending off with an easy one, bromobenzene, which again, you know, benzene, that ain't right. There should be an N there, but you know, who's worried about such things? All right, so let's write our benzene ring. Put our circle, and then we just got a bromine. Boom, we're done. Okay, so that's naming benzene rings using ortho, para, or meta, or just the substituent numbers.